Yeah, man. Yeah. It's the triumphant return. It has been quite a freaking while. One day! And boy, have I had some time to think about this one. Forget about that lip, but this is a weedless, lipless crankbait. I'm gonna go with like jerk bait. That's how I'm gonna treat this because I'm gonna rip it off the bottom, have it do its thing and fall back down. Weedless, jerk lipless crankbait with a hook on the back and a weed guard coming off of that bit right there. Today is its day. Let me grab a piece of Tupelo. I pay Tupelo. I like that thickness right there. Not that thickness, but that thickness. I'm going for something that looks very much like a shad. Shiner shad, river bait fish. And it has a slight angle up as you go to the back. This hook in the back is gonna come back and around. That's some extra weight hanging off the back, which is gonna want it down. I don't know, I think, I just feel like it's all gonna keel nicely if there's a bit of a bend to the body, so I added one. Hopefully it's not a mistake. It's super healthy to try stuff like that once in a while, just so you know. I just said a lot and didn't hit the record button. I'm kind of frustrated now. You guys probably aren't. Probably like, woohoo, back to the lure making, but <laughs> I gotta tell you something. It's extremely hard to catch fish right now, this time of the year. There are some insane techniques that people use around here to catch fish, and I'm gonna try to implement them a little bit this year and catch fish through the hard time. No promises but I'm gonna try. There are probably others, but this is the technique that I've been introduced to just recently. There's certain spots on the river that people around here guard very tightly that you can go to, and they're drop-offs, essentially, and the fish hang out in the deeper spots right after the shallow spot. They throw their quarter ounce or eighth ounce jig head with a ringworm tail on it, usually, or a twister tail or whatever. Whatever's gonna stand up and catch current and flap around a lot, because all you do is cast, let it sink to the bottom, and let the current bounce it around on the bottom until it happens upon a walleye's face and then the walleye bites it, if you're lucky. That's kind of my intention with this. I'm making it weedless, that way we don't lose it immediately. Hook comes off the top around the back with a weed guard. That way it's gonna be doing this on the bottom with the occasional rip. Walleye sees it, reacts, bites, set the hook. That's all I got. When it comes to a hard bait, and if I wanna use that technique, that's why I'm making this. I would normally not be doing something like this, but let's fish through the hard times and actually catch fish. Try to display some fishing skills here. Looking clean. Beautiful shape. Let's carve it out. But before we get to carving, I just remembered we need to do something important. <sighs> Gotta cut a big fat slot in it and make decisions, one sec. I have a bag of four ot jig hooks, mustads. Get out. These are quite stout. Fantastic jig hooks, really. I'm gonna work away at this slot until this hook fits in there pretty much like that. Angled up a smidget, gotta work this slot down and then thicken it too with some sandpaper from both sides. Flip your sandpaper around, fellas. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's pretty good. I might snip this eyelet off, see how it sticks out. I want it like that, but it sticks out a little bit. I'll cut that eyelet off before I glue all this in, but that's a pretty simple procedure right there. Just glue a jig hook into the back of a piece of wood. <laughs> all right, now let's carve it. Right after I finish drawing these chamfier lines. I hope you guys like my new utility knife. Linux gold, baby. Not messing around anymore. Straight to the Linux gold. <laughs> I would prefer this thing over a Ferrari. It just locks up that blade so perfectly, it can't move. So you're not dealing with a bunch of wiggle woggle while you're carving. Possibly linked below. I should really keep up with my Amazon affiliate stuff, but I, I just don't. But possibly linked below, if Amazon even sells this. Oh, well, look at that, I need a new blade. Let's just unscrew this real quick and pop one in. Ooh! Whoa! Rolling into 2021 with responsibility. That lead pot just got plugged in. You're looking at a new man. <laughs> I can't believe I remembered that. What in the world? 
We'll get this thing carved out and that lead's gonna be hot just in time. Put a big old dollop of the funnest metal in the world right in the middle of this thing. I want it to sink really good head first with that hook sticking up and it's weedless and it's doing this on the bottom. Not messing around. There shall be a 3 8 inch hole right up towards the head here. Nice and centered. More centered. That centered. Yes. I'm gonna have to be careful. This is getting very close to the edges of the bait. Like this is almost just 3 8 inches wide. So. Large hole for a little bait. Perfect. And just as intended, the lead is just got hot. Seriously, just got hot enough to pour. Boom, done. So efficient. The magical wonders of responsibility. Just a few minutes later, let that lead cool off before you apply the bacon soda, super glue and bacon soda. I already have a fishing spot lined up for tomorrow too if I don't catch a fish today. From the river straight to a pond that I'm assuming isn't frozen. You can't really beat that method for removing material in a fast manner. But eventually you do need to get more accurate. And eventually you need to dump super glue over the whole thing. As you do on this channel. I love one days. It's like a proof of concept thing. It's not a, hey look at what I made thing. It's a, hey look at what might work, which is cooler in my opinion. Maybe you could leave out the hay at the beginning. Hey guys, look at what might work. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. There is a weighted piece of wood that's supposed to be a lure. It will be one soon. Poke a hole way up here, nice and centered. I just screwed that screw eye in further than necessary and countersunk it. With the Tupelo wood like this, you can just push that wood out of the way. And with such a chunky piece of hardware up front here, I felt like it needed to be that way, like sunk in a little bit. There, that's perfect. First, just drop super glue on it until it starts spilling out of somewhere you don't want it to. Then you know you got full coverage. Then I'm just gonna sprinkle my baking soda on and occasionally add super glue when necessary. It'll start smoking, don't worry guys. Everything's fine. That's how the super glue and baking soda lets you know it's doing good. That hook is going nowhere. Let's clean all this up though. Okay, it's looking smooth enough to where I can begin the super glue bath. You might think that I'm excessively rubbing this bait. You'd be partially right, but you do need to rub it a lot if you want that super glue to be smooth. Like you have to go back and forward with your finger over it. Otherwise you get a bunch of white crusties that's just no cool, no, no fun, no cool. Dang it, I got a white crusty. Now I can show you what they look like. See that one? They just bubble up and appear out of nowhere and they smoke and stuff and you try to avoid those by rubbing. I'm not kidding, this is how all of this works. <laughs> okay fellas, there we have a fantastically shaped, ready to be weedless, once I'm finished painting and clear coating, I'm gonna put the, the weedless strains that come out to the hook point there from the dorsal fin or whatever the top fin's called. But that was quick. How quick? I started at 10 and it's not even 11. Quick. Almost forgot about that. We are ready to paint. Starting with white. And I'm not putting any sort of fancy foil or anything on this. I'm gonna straight up paint this one, everything. I'm gonna paint everything on this. Next up is a thick coat of uh, fluorescent red. Red is a fantastic springtime color. And this is a very hardcore red. But I'm gonna come from the bottom with white and the top with black. They might be variants of white and black, but that's the plan. With stencils and stuff, with, I'm gonna make it look cool. 
It's nice because that's a satin red, just a tiny bit of gloss. And then the difference will be, I'm gonna use probably this Wicked Platinum. It's a pearlized color or a metallic color. The semi-gloss or the, the satin or whatever this is against metallic color always looks amazing. Probably use a pearl black on the top too. So yeah, I don't know if I wanna double layer it or single, probably a single. One side at a time. Let's nail it down too. Let's make this nice. We're going with that. All you're doing is making things nice and tight. Pulling that mesh to the body. Now you can spray away at it without worrying about moving that mesh. One more. Freeze up your solution-based mind for a creative-based mind. You don't have to worry about doing things in order to be creative. It's just spray at it and be creative, you know? That's a little too deep. It's not that big of a deal. That was a good amount of pain. If I went any further, I would have had overspray and it's getting under the fabric and making it look ugly. Probably gonna do three layers of that. Probably just need one layer of black over the top. And I'm not gonna hit this with a heat gun to dry that paint faster. If I did that, it would deform all of this fabric. Yeah, be careful with your scale and mesh and stencil material because if you hit it with a heat gun, most of the time it's gonna deform it and not look as good. Quadruple checked that there's no water around the nozzle or anywhere near my airbrush spray. So you gotta check that every time before you start spraying. Make sure there's no water anywhere around there. It'll, it'll catch and it'll spit onto your, whatever you're painting and destroy it. So I'm gonna try something that I think is pretty cool. The best way to get this to work, I'll just show you. Because the best way for you to know what this is, is for me to just do it and not explain it too. Here we go. A little bit of silver. Notice the angle I'm coming in at. This is, oh no, never mind. My stencil material broke. It all shifted. So this is what the bait's gonna be. No going back. Woo. It, it looks fantastic regardless. I was gonna come in with silver and try to just make it so this material is blocking some of this and it's like, it, it's gonna give more shape to the, the splotches that are there. I'm not explaining any of this correctly, but here's the bait, that's what it looks like. That's gonna be the body of this bait. Looks fantastic too. One of those strains just gave way and then the whole thing popped and shifted and if I sprayed the silver on it, it looked like garbage. I'd lose all of the red. And we want that red, because that looks really cool. That looks so good. Who needs gills? Just put an eyeball on that, you know? One day! I'm gonna do the other side real quick, one sec. Beautiful. An appropriate tool would probably be better than your fingers for removing these nails. You do what you gotta do, fellas. <coughs> oh, that one's even cleaner. Second time's always cleaner. Look at that. What you shoot for is to just see a tiny sliver of black from the side angle and then white on the belly. I want to be finished. If I added gills to that, it would, it would make it all look worse. I want to be finished. As it is, that's extremely interesting and more than I was asking for. Let's put some eyes on and clear coat it. I realized one more thing to do. That was a transparent base with what's called interference blue and a little bit of reducer. You can definitely see it where it's more dark up there. There's a blue sheen, but it goes all the way across the body. It's there, trust me. <laughs> wow, some eyes that I did not realize that I had. Wow, and those are pretty cool. It's a nice holographic gold. I spent a long time looking for these and I finally found them. Oh, those are sticky. I can appreciate that eye. I like the gold. Clear coat. This is strange. I've lost my can of UV clear coat. Where did it go? It's 12:14 and I'm still looking for it. We are burning daylight. Dude. How do I lose that? This was well hidden. It's all dusty. You can tell I haven't done a one day in a long time. Ah, it smells like summer. Love the smell of this stuff, even though it does not smell that good. It's the smell of good times. 
Wow, that did a lot for that blue. So smooth and shiny now. And my UV box is taken apart, but these are the lights. We're just gonna plug these in and use them. I gotta kinda be careful with these because if I plug these in and grab this box, it gives me a full 120 volt. Kinda have to not touch this. Oh, there it's fine. What do you have to grab? Maybe you need to be grounded too. I don't know, but I've been shocked by this and this little Chinese light and put on a hurtin'. <laughs> I'm gonna turn this light on. Give it one more drippy poo. This is dripping. I'm trying to keep it away from the light because it's set so fast. One solid drippy poo and put the nose straight onto the light. Start rotating it. Get it solidified from the nose to the butt. It doesn't take much. It's probably good now. Don't look at the light. I hear it's like looking at the sun, but it's just not as intense, but you're getting that amount of UV. Light straight through your pupil into your eyeball, doing damage. I just looked at it, whoops. So this is, it's set. It's not gonna go anywhere, but it's tacky. You don't just wanna touch it. But I, I've i developed this technique where I just put this in here and I put the other light on top and turn it on and it just nukes it. It takes like 15 minutes and you got a bait that's ready to fish with. So here's how I do that. Set it up on its belly. Probably isn't enough space, let's see. Oh, it is. So it's getting light from everywhere and it's extremely close to those filaments or whatever's used in these LEDs. They don't use a filament, but you get what I mean by my hand motions right now? That's what's happening in there with UV light. Okay. I needed a snacky poo. To the river. We have arrived at the river and the water is up. Just about out of its bank right there. Which makes this more difficult. Substantially more difficult, I think. Nobody's here and that's a bad sign because usually people are here. Okay. Let's give it our best. Wow, it really flutters. Flutters on the fall, flutters on the retrieve. This ain't working out, fellas. Oh, that felt like a fish, but it's not. It just breaks. I don't know what's on here. There we go. Well, folks, I think I've had enough. River's blown out. There might be a pond that's unfrozen somewhere. Next location, I'm on the highway here. Got to get out of the truck, walk through a bunch of that to make it to the fishing spot. It's a spillway, it's two tubes. I call it the tubes. Anyway, let's go. Got a couple hours to fish, maybe, probably an hour and a half. And I'm just bringing this bait. I'm gonna be super sad when the pike breaks this off and I don't have anything else to fish with and I have to go back to the truck. And... Yeah. Impossible. This is impossible. I made this bait weedless. I have to jump across this now. And if I don't make it, that is not cool. Alright, three, two, one. <laughs> Thoroughly snagged. What? 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 Okay. No! 
No. 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 I have to go back to the truck. I was all like, oh yeah, I got it. And then it was gone. I mean, I was pretty much expecting to snag that bait. <laughs> it was meant for the bottom. The weed guard was not that strong. I got a hook into something and I'm not going in that water to get it. I don't like that bait that much. Okay, let me focus on making this jump. Okay, I made it. Next day, kind of chilly this morning. I'm gonna be throwing these. The Nuggets, three inch open pours. We are at a pond that is partially covered with ice. We kind of were not expecting that today. Wow. That's hard to believe. I just caught one on the swim bait. It's official. And that was quick. Bass like the new nugget. I'm glad that I, that I made that official so quickly here. Quite impressive. Huh? Be free, let's get another. I was gonna hook that fish. I felt the bump and then like three seconds later. <laughs> Same swim bait. Three inch open pour swim bait. The nugget. Yeah. Despite not catching a fish and snagging the bait off, that was a strange snag too. I actually looked back at that video when I was editing and it's, it seemed like that lure was like two feet off the bank and I could have just reached in and grabbed it. But the line ran down the end of this log that was going into the water from the bank. It was all submerged. You couldn't see anything. I, couldn't, I didn't know that log was there. Hung it up on that log and the bait like crept its way down, but the line stayed where it snagged initially. And I broke off right at the end of my pole. And you see how that eyelet's cracked? Cut my line. Not cool, Jack. So I got some new tips. I'm gonna put a new tip on that rod because I love that rod. It's a freaking Stargate, super light. Super sensitive, one of my favorites. Anyway, enough about my rod collection. I still consider this video a success. I caught a bass on the nugget, and it was March 13th when I did that, I, I think. A cooler fish would have been cooler, of course, like a walleye or something, but I caught a bass on the nugget, and it's early season, and I'm satisfied. I was very satisfied that day. I was fishing with Debo too, and he caught a fish on a red lipless crankbait at the time. Gives me an idea for the next one day or the next bait. I might take multiple days to make that bait. Anyway, no need to explain my plans. Video's over. Let's just say it was a success. I got the ideas rolling now. I'm gonna start on one right now, I think. On to the next bait. One day. To the river. Not messing around anymore. I was all like, oh yeah, I got it. And then it was gone. Don't look at the light. I mean, I was pretty much expecting to snag that bait. Who needs gills? This is impossible. That's all I got. 